here with Jamie Nieto. I'm a two-time Olympian, 2004 Olympics and 2012 Olympics. Um, so make sure you guys check me out, jamienieto.com. You can get a lot more information there. You do sprinting as a distance person, but it's not the same as sprinting as a sprinter. Yeah. Like if you're a sprinter, you run hundreds, you run 200s, stuff like that. Yeah. You don't run 400s or 800s because I think you're wearing out that those fast twitch fibers and you're working on a whole different a system uh, in your body. You know, the neuromuscular system is not firing at a quick rate. It's, it's now firing at a slower rate because you're teaching it endurance. You're not teaching it explosive dynamics mechanics. So you must believe in this mentality a little bit. Like if you want to train to be a sprinter, don't spend too much time in the distance field or don't train 100%. Yeah. Yes. Because that can actually do diminishing returns or like counterproductive. Exactly. exactly. I mean, it's science. It's yeah. science. It's not really my opinion. Yeah. It's, it's science. It's been proven over and over again. You can ask any track and field coach. You can ask most track and field athletes who are at an elite level of, of training. Okay. <laughs> you brought something up about how you might not look strong, but you are. <laughs> I don't know, you look very strong. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that being said, I, another thing I think about when I look at track and field is a lot of the times the long distance runners kind of look frail mm -hmm. and a lot of the times the sprinters look like almost bodybuilder-esque, like you can see every striation of their muscles. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's just that's just the way they built or is there the way they train lending them to the, that kind of look? That's what it is. The way they train is lending them to that type of look. First of all, uh, a lot of muscle is not going to help you in the distance. Yeah. You know, so putting on a lot of muscle and running around, it's actually going to hurt you because okay. you're going to end up being heavier running around the track 30 times or however much distance yeah, you're yeah. running. And then uh, vice versa. Now, the muscle for the sprinters is actually pushing them. When you're stronger, you can run faster in a sense if you have those fast twitch muscles that are lending you to be that fast yeah. in the first place. You know, yeah. just because you're strong and big doesn't mean you're going to run fast. You yeah. still have to be. You know, dynamic, you have to have those fast switch fibers that allow you to run fast anyways. But if you also add the speed to it, and they're also working on strength to weight ratio as well, if you add the speed to it with, um, with the strength, then they're going to run faster. So that's why you get that. So it's it's their type of training that's leaning to what they're doing. Yeah, I, I, we believe that too. I just wanted your opinion because when people are trying to uh, shape up exercise-wise in the fastest way possible, we usually try to persuade them to go more into the fast twitch exercises. Yes, definitely. And we what, use the sprinter versus distance as an example. What definitely, they look like. definitely. I think um, whenever I train somebody, and I've done some personal tra training as well, I, I try to get them to do intervals, sprint intervals. Sprint intervals. Because I think that'll be the fastest way to lose weight. Uh, depending on how much weight you have, you got to work your way up. If you're really, really overweight, I wouldn't say start running yeah. hundreds all of a sudden. <laughs> you know, But if you're in decent shape and you got to lose five or 10 pounds, Let's do some hundreds, yeah. you know, some repeat hundreds or something like that, or even less, you know, depending on what they can handle. You know? Cool. Yeah. It's good at reaffirming to hear as well. And then finally, uh, what about food? Do you think there's any foods that are best for elite levels of training, or do you eat in a certain way? There is a different ideal to that. You know, there's different logic to that. Now, I've seen guys who have eaten McDonald's the whole time at the Olympic Games and have won medal. Wow. You know, so... Uh, again, it's it's a they're psychological sponsored. thing. Yeah, they are Olympic sponsors <laughs> as well. Uh, but, you know, it, it's psychological. If you feel like, and obviously there's physiological and scientific proof behind it as well. This year for me, uh, not this year, 2012, I decided to have a better diet. Okay. So I, I cut out candy, I cut out a lot of sugars, uh, not as much carbs, uh, a lot of saturated fat. So I wasn't eating as much fried food greasy foods okay and I felt like that helped me to keep my weight down better okay you know so for me that was key and building that strength to weight ratio as best as possible I wasn't struggling with my weight like oh, I gotta lose three more pounds so I can be at my jump weight you know yeah. it wasn't that for me I was there the whole year um, so you know and also I'm a little bit older as well so maybe you know the younger athletes can get away with eating burgers and french fries and whatever, whereas the older athletes a little bit tougher because it's going to be harder for them to keep the weight off because the metabolism is not, metabolism is not as high. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, but I do always encourage, you know, try to have the best diet as possible. I think, you know, if anything, psychologically it's going to help you. Okay, cool. Yeah. And do you meet any, many people there in your field, uh, like especially the explosive field, that eat vegetarian diets or vegan diets? Just curious. Mm, I don't know of any sprinters or high jumpers that are vegans or vegetarians. Yeah, I, I would. I, would, I imagine it more carries over to like the long distance running realm, but 
and even then, I mean, you know, you're talking about when you're running distance, you need a good Well, it's definitely cool to just hear all, of, like, kind of reaffirming evidence of what we do and then what we kind of try to persuade other people to do that they're trying to get fit fast. And we do think it's kind of like eating a cleaner diet helps, but especially the movement ways is like the uh, fast twitch explosive exercises and being well rested before those. And then before we end it, you, is there any other tips and tricks or say if this way we did a video teaser and it went viral and like a million people saw it, would you want to like say anything specifically to a general audience? Yes, please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Check out my website, jamienieto.com. I got a couple of new web series up. Holla at your boy, which is a great informal web series about, uh, and you can also hear not just from me, but other Olympic athletes telling their story and their testimonial about how they became Olympic athletes. It's called Holla at your boy, so make sure you guys check that out. Okay, cool. Hey, it's a great, great to have you. Thank you very much, this, Daniel. Thanks a lot for this. This is awesome. Peace. If someone just like a, a layman is watching this video and they're like, I want to jump higher, mm -hmm. I want to like at least learn from this guy. He's tapped into the highest level of jumping there is. Yeah. What's the first thing or the easiest thing people can start doing or maybe some kind of exercises to start tapping into their jumping abilities? Um, my, I would say my biggest thing We're would the be... Raw We're the raw